Hey peeps, welcome back to Project Anonymous and in today's video, we're going to show you our top five tips for embroidery in Inkscape and Inkstitch. So let's get to it. So we've mentioned a lot of these tips on previous videos on our channel before, but if you're just getting started in Inkscape and Inkstitch, this is a nice little video to kind of give you all the basic tools that you'll need to start your first project. Number five on our list is Params. Params is basically your function to customize your embroidery stitch out. So if you don't like the way a standard or default uh, fill stitch is or a default stroke looks like, you can adjust those settings in your params. The reason it's number five on our list and not number one is because you don't necessarily need to mess with params unless you want a customized look, a specific angle, or specific distances between stitches. You don't necessarily have to adjust params, but if you have issues in mm -hmm. your embroidery design, params would be a good first place to start to tweak your design to fix those issues. So to access params, you just need to select your uh, object that you want to adjust, go to extensions, ink stitch, and params. So here in params, you can see uh, what our default settings will be for this basic rectangle with a stroke. And from there, you can select the different portions of your design. So if your design has a stroke on it, you can go to the stroke function here, or if you're just dealing with a fill, you can go there and then you can adjust the underlay as well. So the first part in stroke, you can see that it will default to a running stitch or bean stitch the first time you use it. And you can change that to a zigzag stitch uh, to give you the standard classic zigzag stitch around that. One thing that we learned early on uh, with ink stitch was we would look at this and say, oh man, this isn't gonna look good because the stroke is gonna sew on first and then be covered up by the fill stitch here halfway through. Well, that's not really the case. And we'll show that when we go into the realistic simulator that it actually knows to put that pink section on top. So uh, it won't exactly look like that. But again, the whole purpose of params isn't to view your design in uh, the, that amount of detail. It's really just to make those setting adjustments. So here in stroke, we've got all of that set up. And again, we can change all of these different things in stroke. In our fill, we can adjust how we fill and all of those settings as well. And then of course our underlay, we can choose to have it or not as well as some of those settings. And if you really want a lot of details in params, definitely check out our video that we dedicated on params. Number four. Is the simulator. So like you were saying earlier. Well, that's not really the case. And we'll show that when we go into the realistic simulator. The simulator is gonna be a better check of how this actually is going to embroider because the params just kind of shows the different settings that you'll be able to get with this. So you just wanna have your object selected and then go to extensions, ink stitch, visualize and export, simulator slash realistic preview. Then it will pop up this window. So once your stitch plan renders, you can pause and you can play it. You can choose for your embroidery to go backwards or forwards. You can also take steps in your embroidery. You can also skip to the end or go back to the beginning. And you can also change the speed of how your embroidery plays. You can also zoom out and zoom in. Then you can also go to the show tab and you can show different commands you've added or you can just hit realistic and this will make your preview realistic. One thing to note here is when you use the realistic function, it will slow down quite a bit because it's rendering a much more detailed view of that image. So what we really like about the simulator realistic preview is that it will give you that realistic look. If you're doing this for a client or just putting something together that you want to embroider in the future, you can get a good concept of what it would look like when you click on that realistic yeah. function in the simulator and it will give you that realistic look that you can then go back to a client or uh, to someone who wants something to make sure this is exactly what they want. You can also view your different angles of your stitches will have different shininess to them and the realistic preview gives you a, a good concept of what it will look like. And for us, we use uh, quite a bit to help organize how we're gonna go ahead and embroider our design by organizing by color. So there's mm -hmm. a few color changes as well as it gives us an idea of how many total stitches there are. Just some really cool data points in there that, that we can get. Yeah, you can use this timeline to kind of see what colors you have and then you can just skip to that certain color that you want. 
Number three is saving your design in the correct format for your embroidery machine. We have a brother SE 1900, so we know that when we save our design, we need to save it in the .pes format. But there's many different kinds of formats out there for embroidery designs, and Inkscape and Inkstitch allow you to save those different embroidery designs. So to do so, all you really need to do is save your file. So if you go to save as, you can save uh, by name here where you want it. Right here, you can choose which Inkstitch file you would like to save it as, so for which format. So you can see all of the different types of formats here that you can save in. We tend to use the zip file to save because it takes one step out for us. We can save it in multiple formats by saving as a zip. Uh, what it will do, is it will give you a menu of all of the different kinds uh, to save as. So for us, we would save it as an SVG as well as a PES for our design. But if you were starting your own business and you wanted to make your own embroidery designs and you don't know what type of machine they have, you could of course click every single one and with one save, you can save all of those different formats. Tip number two, is the lettering tool. This is basically a really cool feature which you can create custom satin stitches but in letter format. So this will be useful for any monograms or if you want to add something custom to something you've made to mark your initials or something. So to locate this you can go to extensions, ink stitch, lettering, and it will pop up this window where you can type something in. So for example you could do the letter A and then it will open a preview of how this will embroider. And then you can pick the font you want to use. And there's a bunch of different ones. There's even an applique one, which we've made a short on. Now, one thing I'll point out is the lettering tool is completely different than the text and font tool that you'll find on the left-hand panel of Inkscape. And the real difference is, is lettering is formatted in a satin on the text and font tool side. It is just a fill stitch in the shape of a letter. So it will give you a much different look when you are embroidering out a project. And what's really cool about lettering is how far it's come since we started using Ink Stitch. There was just a handful of fonts in there. And now there's a ton of fonts that folks have created custom fonts and uploaded into Ink Stitch. Now every time we do an update, there seems to be more and more lettering fonts. So this is really cool. And once you're happy with what you've made, you can just hit apply and quit and then it'll come up here. So our number one tip to beginners getting started is the trace bitmap feature. Because most people who want to start getting into embroidery just want to take a simple JPEG or PNG file, drop it in here, and then have the machine do everything mm -hmm. to turn it into an embroidery project. And unfortunately, that's not really the case and not how things work in Inkscape and Inkstitch, but there is a way to do that. It's somewhat labor intensive sometimes, uh, depending on how complex your design is, but that's where most people start. People don't typically start by drawing out specific patches or, or shapes or whatnot, tend to want to just take a file and, and drop it in. So trace bitmap is the greatest place to start with that. So we'll go ahead and show you with a simple design that we have already designed on our channel. Check out that video, but it's our Hey Peeps design. So once you import picture, you can see that this one is a PNG file and we're just gonna drop it in there. And then we will use trace bitmap here to kind of get some uh, customization. This file right now would not embroider. So there's nothing we could do right here. If I went into params, it's not gonna show up anything. It's not gonna work because it's just an image. It's a picture. It's not a vector design. So if I go into my node tool, there's, there's no nodes to speak of. So in order to get it to work, we use trace bitmap. So you can find that by first selecting your image and going to path, trace bitmap. And from here, you can decide how you want to go about it. So I think the simplest ones to do are black and white. So a single scan will give you kind of a, a black and white image to go off of. But if, let's see, yeah, using the brightness cutoff, this is how we typically will uh, copy over black and white, you know, like clip art type images. But if you wanted to get a color design, you can do that as well by going to multicolor, and then you can select by colors here, and then you can decide how many colors you want to import. You can see it's getting rid of colors as I um, click on this. So we have four colors in this design. There's a whole bunch of settings in here to play with uh, to get the perfect trace that you want. And then using this 
update preview here will give you kind of a good idea of what we're going to be looking at for final product. So if I click on this remove background, it's going to get rid of the white area here. And because part of our design is white, I'm going to leave that on in favor of just deleting the nodes to get rid of this background. But if you had a white background and there's no white elsewhere, you could click on this remove background and it's going to not give you a background. But I'm going to leave this one on. I hit apply. And just like that, now we have our vector design. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the image. If I go to my nodes tool now, you can see I actually have nodes where I need them. So again, like I said, you can get rid of this white background by simply deleting the nodes here. So you can see you can delete that background just like that. So I'm going to not go through all of that. Uh, this would actually be pretty good embroidered. So let's go ahead and take a look in params real quick to see if this will work. There's some things that we would probably change about this. We would probably do some reordered letters here so that there are not so many jump stitches. But that's a simple trace bitmap with very little work. Um, essentially, you could download something off the internet that you want to embroider, do a trace bitmap on it, do a small adjustments to get it to work and then embroider it out. And I think that's what most people start with when they get into embroidery. So that's why that's our number one tip. There's our top five tips for ink stitch and inkscape for embroidery. Yeah, there are many tips and tricks out there for inkscape and ink stitch. These are just our top five. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like if you liked it. Like it. Subscribe to enjoy our content. Subscribe. And turn on notifications so you get reminded every single time we post a video. Stay crafty. And be happy. Bye.